Hi, welcome. In this video, we are going to look at stored procedures. And stored procedures is very interesting. So um, just think of it um, like functions in um, maybe JavaScript or Python. Just think of it like functions. And at times you might pass in some arguments to um, get um, results. But it, there are also functions in SQL. So with functions, you must get an output. But with stored procedures, the output is optional. There might be time there is no output. And then with um, stored procedures as well, there is you can have an in and an um, out um, parameter. But um, with um, functions, it's just in input. So you don't have um, an output parameter. So just the basics, understand it like you want to be able to have your own algorithms put in certain inputs and then maybe it runs and it just gives you an output. You don't want to be writing the script over and over again so you can store it like a stored procedure. So let's just go straight to the computer so that we can create your first stored procedure for you. And from there, you can be able to expand and grow and reach any limit. So let's do just that. So now um, we are here and uh, we have this database we had created. So if you haven't um, had this same database, you can always go back to an earlier video called create the database and you'll be able to have a script that you just copy paste and run the script and you have this same database being generated. So there's a database here and the tables here are the staff um, demographic table and then you have the staff salary table. So if you have also been looking, you would have seen that you have views, which we have seen in the previous video. And then now we want to look at what are stored procedures. Um, how do they help us in SQL? So like I said, think of them like you want to write a function or write something, a script that you just give it some inputs and stored produce can take even outputs. And then you just get your results with one click. Just call the procedure like you're calling a function in SQL in um, JavaScript. Python or R or whatever programming language. So think of it like that. So, but then let's just go straight, um, create um, one or two procedures and then you just understand how it works. So the first thing, let's look at these tables just to understand. And then we have the staff demographic table. So you can always go back in earlier videos and check. It consists of the information of the staff, like their first name, last name, age, gender. Then we have the staff salary table, which consists of information like um, job title versus salary. So if I click here, you might have um, analyst appearing twice, care rep appearing twice, manager, receptionist appearing twice. So um, we've, we've looked at this table since we started this series. So you can always go back and, and check. Now let's go to um, creating a procedure. So the first thing you need to write is a delimiter. So um, you need to specify your delimiter. In this case, I'll specify the double forward slash. Then we say, okay, you, not, you need to write a create procedure. So what I want to do is I just want to create a procedure to help me get um, all mails. So here we have these mails here. So um, these three mails, remember we added a, a mail when we we're doing the altar table and things like that. So um, you can always go back to an earlier video and check. So we have these three mails. We want to run a procedure, create a stored procedure that each time we just call it, um, it gives us all the mails. So we can we need to give it a name. That's the first thing. Get all mail. Then we 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 begin the procedure. So the procedure begins here. So we say begin. Now we need to write the statement. So what do we want to save? Like the script, you want it to always run all the time. So we want it to first do select star from. Um, I will set staff demographic since we want to get um, the mail. Staff demographic. Then where, where gender. equals to mail. So now we have to close this statement. So the statement ends here. Then we also end the procedure. So the procedure has to end here and uh, end here. And we have to put um, this delimiter at the end. So if I run this, 
now if i go to our salary staff salary i refresh i just refresh you see we already have a stored procedure called get all mail so how do we call the procedure now so all we need to do is just give a call so we just say call call and then we give the name of the procedure in this case get all mail so you see it's already proposing it to you so you just call get all mail and then you run it and you have all the mail so it simplifies your work so each time even in a team every member my this procedure is safe in the database so anybody who calls this procedure will just get the same result so we don't need to reinvent the wheel by retyping all the commands here maybe it was a long script with 1000 lines 2000 lines at the end of the day you give it an input and you get an output which you would see in the next example how to give it an input and then you get an output so let's say if we go to our staff salary here and then we want to be able to say i don't want to be using all the time where job title equals to care rep give me all the members where job title equals to manager give me all their salaries where job title equals to receptionist i just want a formula uh function so again it's not a function but just think of it like that just to make it easier for you to understand i just want something that i just input um call the thing and then in between the brackets here um like we saw here in between these brackets i just put analyst or i just put care rep or i just put receptionist and then it quickly filters out and just gives me the the results here so let's do just that and you're going to see see that so let me close this one and then i go down here so again i have to start um again with my um, um delimiter again so don't forget delimiter so my delimiter I, I take the forward slash again then i'm going to create procedure so by now it should already be used to the syntax so i'm going to create a procedure and then let's just give it a name that shows that we want to get all staff by job id so let's just say get staff um, let's just say get staff by job let's just simplify like that by job so here we would now um, if you're doing maybe if you're in excel or uh, if you've been using like python or other you know you need to pass in some arguments here just like any um, function so now you're going to use the input function input command here so in in then we're going to say uh, we just want to call a variable job so this will be our um, parameter and each time somebody is going to specify job equals to analyst job equals to care rep job equals to manager and then it will just do the rest of the the job down here when we continue with the the script so let's just go on here so we need to specify the kind of input so the type data type that we expect so we expect a var char just like um here and then we want maybe i'll just say 15 so they might um, just limit it to 15 and then we this closes this one so yeah we can move on now to the next which is the begin so now say you begin so we can now begin now let me just take this off we can now begin our statement begin so we go to our next line which is now select so let me just um, put this here so we have our create procedure get staff by job id in job then we have it like that then we have that we say begin select star star then we get from now the table is them um, staff salary staff salary where now you call the job title job title this is our job title now you make it flexible so it's now it can now it depends on the input called job job 
So um, you have now to close the statement. So when you close that now, you can now come now and get an N with your um, delimiter again. So this delimiter here, the same delimiter that ends it here. So let's run it now. Let's select just that part. Yeah. That's the part. Then we run it. So our procedure has been created. So if we refresh this, we see we have the second procedure, which is get staff by job so now if i come here and i call that procedure i say call just like we called the first one before call get start by job let me just run it like this so you see it says incorrect number of arguments or procedure so it knows that there should be a job argument um in here to be able to give us the result we want so if we take maybe we the first uh, we pass an argument analyst to it into it then we call we run it again we now get just the analyst so we can pass in another argument again maybe care rep care rep so just be sure that you spell it right. Then we have all the care rep. So you can see that with this now, we will not need to go through writing all the procedures. So you could really have long complex code in here. Just have an input that you pass and it does everything for you. And then it gives you um, the this, this feedback or this, this result here. So um, it's um, interesting to know that that is what um, you can do with um, stored procedures. And then there is also the option of using the out. So it also makes it a bit different from the function. So you can decide what could be the output. So let's just um, look at that. So again, I'll just create a procedure. So let's just set the limiter again. Let me just give um, dollar signs here, dollar sign here. Then we go to create procedure create procedure again now we must be used to and of course we have to give a name so get stuff stuff and then we can just do maybe count so we want to just count the number of staff um, by maybe their job or so maybe by job or yeah by job so we can just do it like that and then we, um, we, we again remember we have to get our parameters in in this case now okay i have to get this and the close then i get my parameters in so in this case there is an in input again my input is job and then um, the character um, is, a, is a text so i want to specify that and then i want to limit it to maybe just say the max is 15 I know we can't go up to that, but it's okay. And then now I have an, after that one now, I have an out. So I have another argument again here, an out. So I want to out it, give an output of total. You see um, how it's going to be um, affected. So it will be an integer. So I'm specifying that the output will be an integer. So you're going to see how we are going to use that um, when we call the function. So again, we have to do our begin as you must be, you must already be used to now and um, creating start procedures should be easy now for you. So begin, you select your count. So we want to count, um, let's just take a few like salary. We could take average salary. We could take, there are so many things you can use based on what you've learned so far. But I want you to see the difference. There is the into total now, this total here. We are now calling the total here into and then now we also have the from staff staff um, staff salary salary so we are saying from the staff salary table where now job title job title equals to remember again the job 
so like we've seen here so put your job here same um, job we've put here so the input is the job each time we'll put analyst we'll put whatever is going to give us the count and then you're going to see what this total is going to add like the out here so um let's close the statement close the statement and then we have to end it just like we started it so remember we ended we started with the dollar so we end with the dollar so we end it like that so if i check again just to be sure there is the um, we, we, clo uh, we call this one we close this one so there is the you create procedure get staff count by job there is the in job then you have the character here then there is the out um which is total integer and then we have to take out this this bracket here so this one is closes this function um, the input of this um, function you know we call it function but then actually it's the stored um, um, procedure so select that um, let's be sure that we have the delimiter everything is included so let me bring this down slightly bring it down and then we go from here go from here yeah to the dollar then we run it now so um if you refresh here you've had um, now three stored procedures so again they could be serving different purposes for the whole um, um, company so now let us call this procedure now with the inputs and of course the outs and see how it works so there's a call as you saw before then we call the get we take this one by count now we have two things to pass the first thing to pass is let's say analyst for example analyst analyst then we have the next thing now is the you need to just call this parameter the total so this is what you have um, determined here and then you say select select add total now then you need to close total then you need to close this um, um, statement so if you want to if i close this so if i call um get staff count by and then i say i want you to give me the analyst you have to make sure this one is closed so that the statement is you first give a call and then you get a select so let's run that so we get two so we know that um, if we go here there are two um, analysts here as you can see so it counted the two so you could have used um, anything here in the arguments maybe count or average or um, or yeah so it counts and it gives us two and then now another thing you can use this out for let me just add it here so that you see um so that's also slightly why the the store procedure is different store procedure is different from the function so you can also um give an alias here so we can say do this thing but now give us an alias as let me just keep it cap as maybe um, um number number of analysts for example so if we we now have this alias here so if we run this we now have the title as number of analysts so this is something that the, the one of the beauty of the store term procedure you can add this directly and you get this as the head of the column so i hope you have been able to get this um, introduction to store procedures and you've seen how to create one so with all that you've learned you can combine them and put them in a store procedure get just simple inputs and get very interesting outputs so see you next video wish you good data luck